Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the day three of Clutch Chess International 2020 organized by San Luis Chess Club. And today I would like to show you the game between Magnus Carlsen, number one in the world, uh, current world champion. His rapid ranking is 2881 and he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Jeffrey Xiong uh, from USA. He's number five in USA and number 25 in the world in rapid time control. And he's ranking 2730 and he's gonna play as black. Just about the situation before this game, uh, because in the first day the players play six games and Magnus Carlsen uh, were winning, okay? He just were winning by one point just by one point and in the first game of, of the day number three Jeffrey Xiong equalized so uh, so the players you know and the next game were the draw and that meant that if Jeffrey Xiong managed to draw all the games he gonna pass because he won one of the clutch games so pretty interesting stuff so uh, here Magnus Carlsen plays as white so uh, let's see what happened on the board uh, Magnus opens with d4 we have knight on f6 and now knight c3 uh, knight c3 by Magnus Carlsen and actually this move was played a couple of times by Magnus Carlsen in the past uh, it was invented or maybe reinvented by Badur Jobava because Badur didn't want to, you know, learn all the theories, so he wanted to create the, the, his own systems. Uh, we have d5 and now bishop f4, uh, which is, you know, unofficially uh, called London Jobava system. This is a London system with the bishop on f4 and knight c3, you know, Jobava. So uh, it was actually a couple of uh, videos which, you know, explaining some courses lately uh, and this is quite interesting the main idea uh, is play against c7 okay with the knight and there are quite complicated lines there a uh, very venomous position uh, and let's see how Magnus Carlsen plays that we have e6 e3 and now bishop on b4 pinning that knight and in this position there are actually two moves for white bishop on d3 is one of the moves and Jeffrey Xiong uh, faced that already one year ago against Daniel Naroditsky uh, the game ended in a draw uh, however Magnus goes for knight on e2 knight on e2 also was played by Badur Jobava uh, also by uh, Richard Rapport from Hungary uh, just another you know a young promising talent uh, so uh, definitely this is known move uh, we have castle by Jeffrey Xiong and now a3 kicking the bishop and bishop have to do something exchanging for the knight uh, is not the greatest idea and it was never played in the top level uh, bishop on d6 is uh, very very interesting now this bishop of course cannot take it I mean can but uh, black would enjoy this powerful pawn center where e5 you know with the support of the of the pawn could be pushed uh, in the right moment so this was one of the way however uh shong decide for bishop on e7 and here magnus shocked everybody because how to treat that position so far the players try something like knight on g3 that that was one try probably not the best as he's blocking the bishop uh, also uh h4 this was tried g4 also was tried uh, rook on g1 you know supporting g4 that was also tried even queen on d2 with the idea of the castle on the on the long side so all of these were were tried even even knight on c1 finding trying to find some square for this knight as this is problematic and this knight can then jump to d3 which looks pretty logical however uh, Magnus shocks everybody and he played knight on g1 okay uh, of course this knight in Magnus opinion belongs to f3 so we have c5 knight on f3 uh, and now knight h5 attacking this London bishop and now d takes on c5 knight on f4 first e takes on f4 and only now bishop on c5 and now look at the position this pawn definitely is a weakness black have a very nice center uh, but this pawn is this a weakness if it can be pushed to f5 it can be pretty annoying okay it can be pretty annoying there so how to do that bishop on d3 this was was played by magnus carlsen and now f5 is a problem okay uh because 
this pawn cannot be pushed because knight controls uh, e5. So g6 by Jeffrey Shong. And here is the problem because now the position of king is uh, weakened. So Magnus Carlsen immediately strike with h4. Uh, and now the engine recommends queen on b6. This is the engine move. Queen on b6, simple threat, attacking f2 uh, and attacking b2. And it makes quite some sense uh, because now, for example, after queen on d2, defending, uh, then queen b2 and the king have to do something. And if white want to keep, you know, continue the attack on the king side, then the king have to move to e2. Uh, the queen can be trapped so queen on b6 and the game can continue black won one pawn uh, and the king is in the center so black have quite some possibilities of continuing the game this way uh, if black tries something like h5 it would not work well because g4 okay and here is the problem g takes on h5 is a threat so h takes on g4 knight e5 now queen attacks on on g4 you already see that that's very very dangerous it cannot be protected because then g6 is hanging so a very bad position so definitely h5 is not the move however jeffrey shong just goes with development what can go wrong we have knight on c6 and now h5 uh, queen on f6 bringing the queen closer to the defense also uh, attacking f4 but now queen on d2 uh, defending the pawn but also preparing the castle and here is the critical moment of the game what black should play there are no really great moves uh, it would be good you know to catch the king still in the center how to do that uh, with for example knight on d4 uh, trying to exchange these knights maybe triple the knights on the f file uh, but now knight h2 maybe queen on h4 but white can simply castle and then continue the game okay so not really this way what jeffrey shong try is e5 e5 the problem in this move is he just hanged the, the d5 pawn uh, if this pawn is not hanging then this would be very very serious threat however definitely it's hanging so magnus immediately strikes on d5 uh, and now queen has to be moved so queen on d6 we have bishop on c4 defending now the knight is defended twice and I would like to just show you how dangerous the position is and what are the ideas, you know, behind all of these moves. Once, once you know these lines, you will understand what's going on in this game. So the best move in the position, which was not played by Jeffrey Shong, was bishop on e6. Bishop on e6, uh, attacking this dangerous knight, developing the bishop, connect the rooks. Uh, it looks like pretty good move. However, look how dangerous this attack can be. Now, h takes on g6 uh, and if black decide for h takes on g6 then f5 f5 with the attack on this bishop uh, but also queen h6 with the mating ideas is coming so you cannot just move the bishop so f5 making some you know escaping space space but then f takes on g6 and saying okay i don't care about your bishop but your king has to stay there uh, queen on d7 defending the the seven rank also doesn't work because actually feel free to pause this video and find the winning forced mating idea for white okay this is how serious this position is while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready i know this is the sideline but look at this rook h8 this is the move we are looking for or knight on e7 both of the moves works as a charm uh th they can be played you know uh, in different order but let's see the idea rook h8 so king on h8 and now queen h6 the only move is king g8 and now knight e7 knight e7 could be played first uh and now this is check so the queen can take or the knight can take if knight takes then of course we have a checkmate and if queen takes then bishop e6 okay uh, and now again this is check you cannot take it because the checkmate uh, and if you take with the rook it's still a checkmate queen h7 okay the rook is pinned and this is a checkmate so uh, as you see after h takes on g6 is pretty pretty dangerous f takes on g6 looks slightly better but look at this bishop 
this bishop has now open diagonal so is you know extra extra danger uh what white have to do here is just castle calmly castle and now look at this attacking the queen this way uh, and there are a lot of ideas with knight on f6 so um e takes on f4 of course is, is is always good in this position because queen h6 is still possible after pushing f5 or even f takes on e5 with attack on the queen so uh let's say e takes on f4 is you know a uh, great move it is however queen c3 now and and what to do now there is a new diagonal uh, and now if bishop on d5 because this knight is coming to f6 with check anyway okay and this covered attack on the queen so something about that bishop d5 doesn't work because bishop d5 and look at this this is this is why it's so dangerous you have to you know give up your your queen and if you don't then still you have to do okay your your queen gonna be lost so what else uh the queen cannot move and and this is still a threat okay if queen moves to b8 this is the only square because other squares are controlled by the knight or by the rook still on this uh, on this open d file so if queen on b8 it still doesn't work because knight f6 and now king f7 if you try to run with the king this is a checkmate instant checkmate so i uh, cannot play that rook f6 also doesn't work because queen on f6 uh, and now your bishop is under attack you cannot really defend it as this is uh, this bishop is pinned uh, and also if you take the bishop which looks like okay pretty sensible uh, then again we have a tactic rook h7 rook h7 and now what to play next king h7 this is just a checkmate okay uh, and then you cannot do anything about that so queen on b8 also doesn't work and if you try to run with the king king on f7 then still rook h7 you are just under attack okay you have to move with the king uh, and you're gonna lose the queen okay so so as you see uh, this attack is very dangerous and you cannot even take this pawn you're gonna lose the game and if you attack first the the, the knight which is which is you know very logical conclusion of uh, after all of this what you've seen uh, so bishop takes on d5 f5 still the same on the board queen h6 uh, and you can try to prevent but then your bishop is hanging so white gonna get back the material and attack your bishop so uh if you actually move the bishop uh, to b6 uh, then again rook h7 and what to play next if you play something like queen on f5 uh then g takes on f7 and this pawn is defended three times uh the rook is under un undefended but you cannot take it because bishop on d3 pinning the queen okay and winning the queen so uh rook a on d8 maybe kicking the queen and of course uh, queen can move to e4 and the game can continue but white wins by many ways even queen on f7 is winning okay this is the last move you would expect but rook on f7 uh, rook f7 and your queen is actually trapped if you try to escape with the queen as you see this is all covered by the knight uh, if you try to escape then the problem is rook h7 comes with check uh, and after king on f8 g7 okay and and yeah you cannot do anything you have check you cannot move here so uh king on e8 just create the the queen uh and then queen g6 and wins the game okay so uh you would have to play queen on f7 and still simply g takes on f7 king g7 now knight on g5 there are a lot of threats still a lot of threats so uh for example rook on h8 castle and four extra pawns four extra pawns not e not ideal pawns but this pawn is nearly advanced uh you know the knight can jump to e6 and advance so uh, definitely easy win for white so as you see all of these ideas after bishop on e6 which is recommended by the engine are losing what jeffrey shong played is 
b5 okay deflecting the the bishop uh, but magnus carlsen said this bishop stays on this diagonal bobby fisher like this bishop on this diagonal i also love this bishop on this diagonal this bishop just belongs here so let's stay on this diagonal uh, we have e takes on f4 the reason you already know as i show you these lines so a uh, queen h6 you know followed with with the h takes on g5 would be deadly uh, and now simply castle okay castle we have b4 by jeffrey shong he tries to find some counterplay on the queen side however now magnus starts the attack h takes on g6 h takes on g6 and now knight g5 and can you find the idea what's the continuation here uh how would you continue the attack what is the idea knight on g5 what can be the idea not easy to find but this knight goes to g5 to make the maneuver to e4 and to f6 okay and that would be that would be just deadly because uh you know rook on h7 that would be a checkmate so uh we have bishop on f5 now preventing that knight cannot go on e4 and here magnus carlsen actually missed the winning uh continuation because he was focused on on you know reaching the the f6 square uh, which is also good plan and winning plan however he missed g4 g4 very very powerful move because the bishop is under attack okay uh, and if bishop is moved then he can continue of course with the attack on the queen and move to f6 uh, and if bishop is not moved uh, for example b takes on a3 uh, then queen c3 with the mating ideas and after exchanging uh, how many pieces possible take the bishop and and win the game okay this is just you know extra bishop extra piece uh, and the king is still under attack you know in the attacking zone so uh g4 could be could be pretty good and of course uh after g4 uh f takes on g3 you you could ask what would happen the problem is knight on e4 is still on the board uh and the queen is under attack okay if you take it you're just gonna be checkmated queen h6 and you cannot do anything about that okay uh, queen h7 or queen h8 you cannot defend uh, you know against both of the checkmates uh, and if you play something like queen on e5 uh, on this diagonal uh, then still queen on h6 uh, and now queen g7 and it seems like you save the day but knight e on f6 uh, and you have no choice uh, this is also checkmate so g4 was was missed by magnus carlsen as i said knight on h7 uh with the idea of knight on f6 that was played by magnus carlsen uh jeffrey Shong moves the rook as he's under attack so rook f on d8 knight h on f6 and now king on f8 rook on h8 now king on g7 look at these knights these knights actually uh, controlling very important squares also this pawn cannot move so the king is stuck over there okay and now the knight's doing really great job and the rook's gonna join and and checkmate uh, over there so king on g7 now rook on h7 king on f8 and after rook d on h1 jeffrey shong resigned the game however he could try you know a couple of more moves for example g5 g5 making a space for the king so you know the rooks cannot just uh checkmate over there and also bishop controls h7 okay so it's slightly more difficult but it's still winning for white rook h8 king g7 and still uh, you know rook to to h7 from the first rank uh bishop on h7 rook on h7 and now uh after king on g6 we have a checkmate so that's not the greatest move uh, and if you play king on f8 then still queen d3 and the idea is of moving the rook to h8 and checkmate on h7 okay so for example if you play something like knight on e5 with the attack on the queen uh there is of course a checkmate here okay if you play a uh, queen on f6 queen on f6 it also doesn't save you because after knight on f6 and rook on d3 yes you you lose this queen however rook f7 this is a checkmate because this bishop as i said <laughs> this is bobby fisher bishop and it's very very powerful here uh so after knight on f6 of course a rook cannot take the queen what else to play knight e5 defending this also doesn't work queen f5 queen f5 uh 
the idea is to attack this this knight okay you cannot defend it because you're gonna be checkmated again uh, and if you try rook on d7 okay defend it uh, then rook h8 with check uh, king g7 of course is knight h5 with check uh, king h8 now queen f6 you already should see this is a checkmate and if your king move to, to e7 then checkmate is even faster you know uh, queen on e5 and, and this is a checkmate uh, I'm not sure if Jeffrey Shong saw all of that because it looks like pretty pretty uh, complicated still you know g5 it looks like this bishop you know could control h7 uh, however uh, Jeffrey Shong resigned uh, maybe he thought okay I'm gonna get checkmated I cannot do anything but he still had the three minutes he could try you know couple of more moves uh, okay so uh, what happened next Magnus Carlsen actually I would like to show you this um, quarterfinals uh, scores so Magnus Carlsen after losing first game uh, Jeffrey Shong of course equalized the game then we had the draw and then Magnus Carlsen uh, won two games won two games and this was one of the games uh, and then we had the clutch games and this was a draw in the first one and last one was pretty exciting because if Jeffrey Shong wins that, he would get nine and a half points. Nine, nine and a half points and he could eliminate Magnus Carlsen so as you see it was very very exciting till the end uh, but Magnus Carlsen won that game and it looks like he's dominating um, you know 11 to and a half to six and a half but this was just about the last game which Magnus Carlsen won and also the same situation we had in the game uh, Wesley saw against Maxime Vachiel Lagrave uh, in the clutch before the clutch uh, we had five to seven five to seven so Maxim needed to win one of the games and he was really really very very close he got the better position he got the nearly winning position however he screwed up and he lost the game against Wesley so uh, and in the last game he just had no will to play and he just you know resigned pretty pretty fast uh, and uh, Wesley so also win 13 to 5 uh, but still last two clutch games would be very decisive and the score could be very very different so uh, this is what happened yesterday is in the quarterfinals and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and uh, leave the comment as always i'm very interested which games if you have some favorite game uh, i can cover that and of course make some analysis uh, and if you don't want to miss any other games uh, press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one